Booga, ooga, booga. Hello, boogies. How crazy is this? I take the month of January off and we hit a huge milestone. Ooga Booga hit 1 million subscribers. How fun is that? To all my haters out there who say, Dylan, you're not at a million, we'll argue with the evidence. Presented to Ooga Booga for passing 1 million subscribers, which is what we've done. And I really, I couldn't have done it without all 1 million of you. That's how many of you there are. Argue with the proof. You can't do it. Those were- ah. You're probably like, who's this old guy? Who's this old guy? <laughs> Talking about his million subscribers. Oh, that's, that's that cool guy. That's that cool young guy. R slash Am I the Asshole. So here's how this works. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this series, there is a subreddit called Am I the Asshole where people come and they post their stories asking who's the asshole in the situation. What we do here is we review and we give our These shouldn't come off so easily. I got sick. I got sick in January with a uh, certain little virus. <laughs> and I lost about like six, seven pounds. And I think some of the, the weight came from my fingers. These are sliding a lot easier. I don't know that the, this imagery is... Uh... <laughs> I talked about how the burnout from, from December made me loopy. And I feel like I'm loopier now. I, it hasn't changed. It hasn't gone away. Am I the a-hole for getting up from my chair in the middle of Christmas dinner and shouting, Shut the F up about my body! In response to my husband's observation. So, ever since I had my son months ago... Oh, recently pregnant. Why? Why, why is r slash I'm an asshole always filled with posts about recently birth giving women? Like exclusively only women who've had babies are posting here. My husband has started making indirect comments about my body. He never says anything hurtful, but I find his observations as he calls it hurtful. For example, he'd see me wearing an old top and say, oh, that top used to look good on you. But not anymore though. There's no way. All right, all right, all right, all right come back, come back, come back. Or when he looks at my waist and says, wow, didn't know your waist could get that wide. <laughs> FYI, this went on for months and months and months. We went to Christmas celebration at his family's home. My sister-in-law complimented my floral maxi dress. Oh, it's a, fl oh, floral, right, like flowers. No, that's a springtime getup. That's a springtime fit. You don't wear flowers on your dress to Christmas. This is definitely gonna weigh in to whether or not you're the asshole. <laughs> so my husband said, I agree it looks nice on you, though I have to admit that your waist could get smaller than this. Awkward silence took over. That, if you're writing a book, that's a sentence you'd write in a book. So I got up from my chair in the middle of dinner and shouted at the top of my lungs, shut the F up about my body. He was absolutely speechless as his family stared while some others tried to get me to calm down and dinner ended up being cut short. My husband's storming off to his friend's place to spend the night upon leaving leaving a very nasty text saying I embarrassed him and made a scene over an observation he made. He called me childish and told me to get therapy for my insecurities instead of verbally abusing him and scaring his family. Hmm. This one, I, for some reason, it doesn't feel real. Like, this is the top one of the last month. I think this was the very top post. Now I feel like an absolute idiot a-hole, and I ruined Christmas for him and everybody with my oversensitivity. Am I the a-hole? I just don't believe this post. <laughs> There's something about it. Although I do think that this is a situation that people find themselves in, so let's just treat it like it's real, right? This person who posted is a little bit of an a-hole for wearing a floral maxi dress at Christmas. What are you doing? No, I'm kidding. Okay, seriously, come on, bro. First of all, I say this so many times. Every time there's a pregnant woman that posts, I say, support. After birth giving, you just go support mode as the husband. Stop making your observations, all right? Shut the, shut up, all right? Did she sit him down and be like, hey, stop. Like really make your boundaries clear. If she didn't really have those conversations and then all of a sudden you blow up in a at an event, there's some decorum you should have when you're, you know, in public. I guess that's my, like the way I grew up is you keep this kind of stuff behind closed doors and then you resolve it there. So as long as you had those conversations beforehand, which I think you have. Oh yeah, she, the fact that she's mentioning that he called it uh, just observations, it made it seem like she's had that conversation. If you have a problem with her body, then uh, she should have got her pregnant. What do you want? I don't know. For some reason, like weight becomes a, a thing in society where it's like you can't mention anyone's weight ever. And you're horrible if you ever tell somebody well, hold on. <laughs> it goes to the fact that you can't talk about it, because I'm like, now I gotta caveat this. Like, you shouldn't have that conversation with someone you don't know. But if it's uh, coming from a supportive place, and especially if you're in a relationship with them, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just believe you should, if you're in a serious relationship and it's coming from a good place, you should be able to have that, those conversations and you should be supportive. Making little snide comments or little observations, that's just not the way to go about it. And if she blows up on you, instead of like getting all defensive, it's better to uh, be like, oh, obviously I've triggered something in them. Let me see and reflect on my own actions to 
to see what brought that out of them. Am I the a-hole for kicking out one of my bridesmaids for showing up in the wrong dress? So this woman is 23 and her wedding was on the 31st of December. In the country I live, it's currently winter and we get a fair amount of snow. So my wedding was a winter themed wedding. I feel like if I had a wedding in the winter, I want to do like a summer theme. And if it was a summer, I'd want to do a winter theme. The color theme was forest green and gold. Great combination. Anything with gold. My dress was obviously white, and I chose the color of my bridesmaids' dresses to be forest green as well. Moe's dress? Mother... Uh, mother... Uh, oh, maid of honor! Chill voice. My maid of honor's dress was black, and everyone was to wear gold accessories. I'm all aboard this. I love the gold with the, the forest green. I think that would look good. I have this friend, we'll call her Kat, and when we went dress shopping, I told him the color theme I was going for. Kat immediately expressed that she thought forest green was a bad choice. I think you're a bad choice as a bridesmaid. She said that she thinks it's not a flattering color and thought I should choose something different and more girly. She suggested a pink, blue, even a red. I said no, but thanks for your opinion. She found out that my ma, my uh, maid of honor's dress was black and asked, if she could wear black too. I said, no, only my maid of honor is wearing black. I paid for all the dresses. I feel like that's gonna be important. Fast forward to the wedding day. Everyone's getting their hair and makeup done and Kat shows up 30 minutes late holding a bag that looked like it had a dress inside. Ooh, ooh. I asked her, what was that for? She told me it was for later on at the reception if she got uncomfortable and wanted to change after pictures. So fast forward, we're all dressed and walking down the stairs because the ceremony is beginning in 30 minutes. Kat is the last person to come down and she's wearing a black dress. I confronted Kat and asked her what was going on. She said she hates her bridesmaid dress as the color is ugly and makes her look gross. So she's wearing black. I told her, please go back and change. She refused and started walking away from me. I said, I'm going to ask you one more time. And if she doesn't oblige, I'm calling security and kicking her out. I feel like this story is getting more British the uh, the further we go. I don't, I can't explain it. <laughs> she began yelling at me to uh, fuck off. So I called security and asked them to please escort her out. She began making a big scene, yelling how I'm such a bitch, that I can't force her to wear anything, and that I'm a horrible, inconsiderate friend. Losing my accent, but okay. The wedding went on, and it was truly amazing. Ever since uh, the wedding, Kat has been blowing up my phone with texts saying some really nasty things, and asking for the money back she spent on the black dress. <laughs> oh, somebody better break Kit Kat off here, because uh, she's looking like a big a-hole right now, since uh, it was a waste, and she didn't get to wear it. Well, she did get to wear it. She just got to wear it with security on her arm. <laughs> I had to block her number. Some of the other bridesmaids have been giving me shit, saying that I was a little harsh kicking her out, embarrassing her like that, and that maybe I should give her the money back. Am I the a-hole for kicking her out? I'm a big believer that you are not the king and queen on your wedding day. However, you do get consideration. Being like, oh, I didn't look that great. It's not your day. It's her day. If she wants you to wear a trash bag, wear the freaking trash bag, you piece of trash. I think the fact that Kat tried to hide the fact that she was going to do this the entire time. Like at some point it occurred to her in the weeks before the wedding, I'll just show up in the dress I want and then put the ball in her court and then make her look like an a-hole if she kicks me out, right? So she planned this out. This is premeditated. If you want to be a true friend, I, I'll look bad for a friend. I don't care. So you're just adding stress to the bride on the wedding day for no reason other than your own vanity. You're kind of an asshole. All right, next. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents that they ruined New Year's celebration after they kicked my husband out over a joke? Oh, getting in trouble for a joke? What's that like? Couldn't be me. I've been married to my husband, or to my second husband, Mike, for four years now. He's a jokester and loves to crack jokes all the time. Sounds like a good guy. I think we'd get along. He especially likes to joke about my brother Ethan and his wife. Ethan used to be okay with it till he started complaining about Mike taking it too far with his jokes. Some context about Ethan, he and his wife couldn't have kids, so they adopted a boy, Joey, two years ago. Mike has been making silly, lighthearted jokes that involve Joey's bio parents as a way to mess with Ethan and his wife. Aye. That's a sensitive area. I'm, I'm all for making jokes, but you can't prioritize the joke over people's feelings, I guess. That's my opinion. I already talked to Mike, and I tell you that he 100% means no harm, and he was just trying to get them to react. Ah, uh, I hate that sentence. He's just trying to get them to react. Your goal, when you make a joke, shouldn't be a reaction. It should be laughter, not to get them to react. You could just say hateful stuff and get a reaction. So fast forward to New Year's Eve, my parents hosted a big celebratory dinner and Ethan and his wife came. While we were eating dinner, Mike decided to tell a knock-knock joke to Ethan. No, he's not funny. I, I promise you, if he's busting out a knock-knock joke, this guy is not funny. <laughs> he needs to stop. He said knock-knock, Ethan laughed. Oh, Ethan's a good guy. If he's laughing at the setup, he's doing you a freaking favor. Mike replied with Joey's bio parents. Then he burst out laughing. Uh, silence took over. Didn't we just read that freaking sentence? Awkward silence took over. I feel like somebody is just posting a bunch of oh i don't know I'm, <laughs> I'm going into my paranoid era his wife called mike an idiot to which mike replied with hey 
relax, it was just the joke. Why is Mike like, whoa, you're taking things a little too far. Don't call me an idiot. Come on, Mike. Argument ensued, dinner was paused. <laughs> Not the paused dinner. My parents suddenly told Mike to leave, which I thought was too harsh. I tried to speak to them and get them to calm down, but mom insisted that Mike leave. I called mom later and she told me that Mike was out of line with his hurtful jokes about this touchy topic and told me I was wrong for defending him and saying he was just joking. I haven't talked to them today and tried contacting Ethan, but no response. Okay, here, 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 here. I know some like a stand-up comedians get in trouble and that's like a whole different conversation because they're, they have like an audience of hundreds of thousands to millions, right? So that's, that's, a, that's a different thing. But when you have a private audience and a joke makes somebody uncomfortable, your first thought shouldn't be like, especially if they bring up that discomfort. I know like human instinct is to go like defense mode, but uh, especially if these are people who you're close to, you just go, ah, my bad. I shouldn't have taken it there. My apologies. Super simple. And then you got to take that joke out of your repertoire. If you're a good jokester, you got to know when and where to drop certain jokes. And if certain jokes, private jokes hurt people's feelings, don't do those jokes with those kind of people. I think a lot of people are just inconsiderate. And I don't think it's intentional. I think people just generally, they don't think about others. They put their pride and ego first. Again, human instinct, so it's hard to blame them, but you gotta overcome that. And no one's perfect, you're gonna make mistakes, but when you do make a mistake, acknowledge it and say, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm learning from it, and do your best to avoid it in the future. Am I the a-hole for high-fiving a stranger who humiliated my boyfriend? <laughs> my boyfriend and I go to the climbing gym regularly. He's stupidly competitive about it and quietly insults beginners who are not as good, which makes me feel self-conscious because I'm a beginner. Last night we were climbing at the climbing gym and he was doing a V6. Don't do climbing lingo, get out of here. My boyfriend was doing a V6, I'm up on the R8. Jenny's over there running the A3, what a loser. There are about six people taking turns on the problem, on the problem. Like it's a freaking math equation. Probably because it's a newly installed route and they were all failing, then a girl came and flashed it. Well, that's rude. Just exposing yourself in public. <laughs> she made it so easy, but at the end she didn't hold for the final five seconds and my boyfriend called her out after she was done. Holding the last hold for five seconds is supposed to be the right way of finishing a route, but she was doing it so easily she definitely could have. I think he was just being salty because she did it when he couldn't. She laughed and told him he didn't even start the problem correctly and walked off. I gave her a high five because she was walking towards me and did amazing at the problem and knocked my boyfriend off his high horse. My boyfriend turned to me and gave me a what the F look and wouldn't talk to me the rest of the night. Why are you posting here? How is this not the most obvious thing in the world? We were heading home. He ranted that I couldn't be trusted to watch his back. If he's in the mob or the mafia or a gang of some sort, then I, yes. Okay, this is important. You gotta watch his back. If he is a regular citizen and he's not in some crime syndicate, then I don't think this is uh, the correct conversation to have. You didn't have my back. When I tried to humiliate that girl who is better than me, you didn't have my back. This guy's got too much of that ego we're talking about. Typically, the person that you're dating is gonna show you all their best sides when you're interacting with them. The best way to find out a person's true character is watch them and their interactions with others who they're not trying to impress. They're not trying to get into bed. See how they treat them because that's eventually how they're gonna treat you. He might be a great swell guy outside of this and it's just something with climbing. His dad was a climber and he always made his son feel so small for not being able to climb as well as his as the dad could, you know? He's, <laughs> I'm giving him rock climbing trauma, all right? Just to <laughs> fill out his character arc here. But there could be things, right, that could be worked out. So I'm not I'm not like big on like, oh, just give up on the relationship. I'm not the asshole, he was being petty, jealous, and a bit sexist calling her out. Oh God, stop, I hate that. If, if he was like, oh, I can't believe that girl did it, then yeah, that's a bit sexist. But if he's just like, he she did it before him and he's like, ah, you didn't do that correctly, that's not sexist. I like to use charged words carefully, like sexism, or racism. Use those when they for sure apply, not when it, you're just like shooting in the dark, hoping that it's possible. Oh, I'm gonna, this one, I'm gonna pose to you guys. Am I the a for prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy? When my son, 14, was eight, we got a dog. So they've had the dog for uh, like nine years. My son loves this dog and does all the care for him, except the vet stuff, and is very responsible dog owner. This dog is pretty much his best friend. Loser. <laughs> Watch them and their interactions with others. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant. Ooh, she's almost there. Couple more weeks to go. And ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him. Today she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she was talking about. She said she's been having anxiety that he will jump on her. 
It's completely unreasonable. He doesn't jump on people. She said that there's no way to know for sure that the dog won't jump on her. And if he does, our baby could be hurt. I told her that there was no way. My son got this dog right after he lost his mom and imprinted on him hard. Is your son's name Jacob by any chance? Because I got some news about this relationship with the dog. <laughs> My wife said I prioritized the dog over her pregnancy. The dog isn't a threat to her pregnancy. If this were any other unreasonable request, I would just do it because she's pregnant. I'm gonna leave this one to you guys. I'm not gonna give my opinion. Although I do have the correct opinion. I don't want to tell you and uh, ruin it for everybody, you know? Because <laughs> she's right. Like, if it's giving her anxiety, maybe uh, that's it's better to uh, remove that anxiety from, from her life and then she can have a stress-free birth. Or maybe she's taking advantage of the situation by wanting to get rid of a dog that she doesn't like. And maybe uh, that's a possibility. I don't know. Maybe you give your opinion on this topic and then we'll watch the next one. Am I the a-hole for not defending my boyfriend when my brother asked him to leave? You know what? The holiday season. These are all popular from the last month. A lot of families, a lot of people who don't see each other often coming together. So we're getting a lot of those kind of situations this time. So this is a 20 year old woman. Her boyfriend's 27. His name's Ryan and he likes to help others. Sounds like a good guy. Is he a jumpster? <laughs> He's the type of guy who would give a coworker money for their rent or buy groceries for our neighbor. However, he could take it too far sometimes. He often tries to help people without asking if they need or want his help. Every year, my brother, 35, Paul and his wife, 33, Lily, host a holiday dinner. This year, Ryan attended for the first time. I told Ryan that Lily was legally blind. Wait, is Lily actually Reese Witherspoon? And had been her entire life. I think she's been Reese Witherspoon forever. I told Ryan to only help Lily if she asked for help. We arrived early so I could help Paul and Lily cook. While we were cooking, Ryan kept telling Lily things like, Lily, if you're looking for the salt, it's to your right. Or, Lily, don't put that there. It's too close to the edge, you silly blindy. I added that last part. I added the last part. I, is that offensive? I, I don't know. But when you do make a mistake, acknowledge it and say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm learning from it. Am I the gay hole for calling someone blindy? Let me know in the comment section. Lily and Paul both told him that while his commentary was somewhat helpful, it was completely unnecessary. Still, Ryan did not stop. However, things became tense when Lily went to go chop vegetables. She pulled out a knife. Ryan stopped her and asked if he could take over because he didn't want Lily to hurt herself. Finally, Paul got annoyed and told Ryan to stop. Ryan did stop, but he kept hovering over Lily while she was chopping. That's annoying, bro. Clearly, she wouldn't be doing this if this wasn't something she normally did, right? Good intentions, but he just sounds annoying as hell. Finally, Lily asked him and I to, to help set the table and greet people arriving. <laughs> Good move on Lily's part to be like, hey, we need your help. Go to the other room and greet people as they come in through the door, away from me. My <laughs> nieces, who are five years old and three years old, have a game they love to play with their mother. They will hand Lily something and Lily would have to guess what it is. Oh no, oh no. Lily would sometimes make a couple of clearly outrageous guesses, like saying an egg is an elephant or a shoe to make her daughters laugh. After dinner, the eldest handed Lily the salt shaker. When Lily guessed it was a phone, Ryan piped up and said it was a salt shaker. It's not a phone, it's not a phone, it's a salt shaker. Lily laughed it off and explained the gate to Ryan, but I could see she was annoyed. My niece then handed Lily a coin. When Lily guessed incorrectly, Ryan loudly told Lily it was a coin. You dumb bull. Oh, Ryan sounds insufferable. You know what the worst part is? He's coming at it from good intention, so I, like this would never sink into him because he has his own worldview where he's the good guy and you can't tell him he's the bad guy by being too good of a guy. Like, I don't think that's gonna register in his brain. He's like, no, I'm just offering help. In a serious sense, he needs therapy to help him understand these things. Or he needs Ooga Booga. <laughs> Paul demanded that Ryan leave since he clearly couldn't respect Lily. Ryan insisted that he was trying to be helpful. Yep, it's not gonna, like this isn't gonna sink in for this guy. I can just see like those, those conversations are not gonna be fruitful if you try to talk to him about this. And she has, she's like, hey, stop offering help. And he's like, no, why would I stop offering help? I'm being a good person. Like that's his mind mindset is like, why would I try to stop being a good person and helping others from possibly hurting themselves or being wrong or incorrect about things? But I, I think that I think he just can't see past himself. And worse, it's rooted in his mind coming from a good place. So yeah, that's that's not gonna change unless he gets like serious help. Or sorry, not serious help, but like serious intervention. Cause like what he's doing right now is, is uh, it's annoying. It's not like destructive in it or anything. So Ryan is currently pissed at me. He said I should have defended him, especially since I knew he was only being helpful. I'm now wondering if I should have defended Ryan. He wasn't being nice, he was being patronizing. Yeah, he didn't even realize. That's the thing. He, he like, this this doesn't register to this guy. Am I the a-hole for telling my son he has to go to university, get a job, or get out? My wife and I have three children. They are 17, 15, and 10. My oldest has no intention uh, to do anything after high school. At least none that he has made clear to us. <laughs> I've been there. I, I took a long time to figure out what I wanted to do. I remember being... 16 or 17 and I watched the World Series of Poker on ESPN and I was enamored. Brought my parents into my room. I was like, mom, dad, 
I got my future figured out. I'm gonna be a professional poker player. <laughs> and I remember the reaction, my mom and dad, awkward silence took over. <laughs> and I, I'm gonna tell you, I worked at like Office Max. They, they weren't paying enough to become a professional gambler. They were like, save up and then pursue it as a hobby. And so like figure out so, like a plan A and that could be a plan B. Fortunately, I, then I chose my plan A to uh, go to a scam college, but I ended up here. So you know what? Maybe things worked out uh, after all. Either go to university, get a job or get out. My wife thinks that I'm being unfair to our poor baby boy, throwing him out into the world. I'm not. So we have the money to pay for his university. We have the money for all three kids. He has a free ride to college. And even if college isn't what he wants to do, it seems like he would have the support of his parents to help him out a little bit. Or he could even say, yeah, get a job. He could stay under the same roof, but he's gotta get a job, you know? So yeah, I actually respect this kind of parenting. You don't wanna raise a kid who just kinda like ambles through life doesn't feel any uh, the pressure to like make something of themselves. My middle child would probably end up with a good chunk of it in her pocket. She's on track for an academic as well as a golf scholarship. They are rich. <laughs> golf scholarships? What the hell? They offer those? The 10 year old is 10 and no, know, uh, who knows what they're gonna do, but he knows the plan. We have not been secretive about this rule. Okay, so that, yeah, that'd be the big thing is if he was like 17 and he only has a couple months to figure this out. But uh, if they've been mm. making this clear for years, then uh, it's only on the kid to, you know, make the plans. My wife and I agreed that we would raise productive members of society before we got engaged. There it is. Her and my son think I'm being cruel. Oh, so the kid. <laughs> oh, of course. The kid wants to do nothing. Of course he thinks his father's being cruel and expect him to fend for himself at 18. He's not fending for himself. He's getting support. I don't think I'm wrong for expecting an adult to adult. My parents have already told him that they would not be giving me any money. Oh, so the grandfather and grandmother. My wife is threatening to use her salary to support him. I don't have any say in that. I won't actually kick him out of the house, but I will stop paying his bills and cut off our grocery budget by 20%. Oh no, you gotta be in lockstep as as parents. If she's gonna give him some money, but then you're gonna lop off money for the groceries so that she has to use her salary then for the groceries instead of giving it to this. Oh God, Ugh. she wants to work, so he doesn't have to. There is nothing I can do about that. I understand though. I, I truly understand this situation because I, I t I'm a late bloomer. I didn't know what I wanted to do for a long time. Although I'm only 20 now, so my passion is now judging people online. And I get paid for it! This is the best! <laughs> hey, guy, hey, 17 year old, I'm just career advice. Judge people on the internet. It's super fun. Let me know, especially anyone who disagrees. I think after you raise a kid, for 17 years, apparently you get kind of attached to the kid. I can understand not wanting to kick him out and being like, hey, good luck in the world now. You know, you, you want to support and, and be there for them. Understanding that the world, especially just because your parents are well off, doesn't mean you're going to be set for life and you never have to do anything. I think that's a valuable lesson to learn. So go, I go to college. If you don't know what you want, just do like a general studies program, right? Is a general studies pro a, a program? I don't know. I went to a scam college. We had like fake classes. Don't worry about it. Am I the a-hole for calling my girlfriend disgusting? and telling her she should be ashamed when she was crying. Not the a-hole badge. This story's about to be a doozy. I'm a 40 year old man and my girlfriend of a year is 38. She has a daughter from a previous partner who is 14 and a freshman in high school. I went over there yesterday to find my girlfriend crying. Oh no. <laughs> I love her daughter. She's the sweetest girl ever. I wish my daughters were as well behaved as her. She has a nice friend group. She does not have trouble with bullies and generally seems very happy. Her mother and my girlfriend was crying because her daughter is not the popular athlete cheerleader homecoming queen that she was in school. Her daughter marches to the beat of her own drum, which I think is the best anyone can hope for. But her own mother referred to her as a loser <laughs> during her crying fit. <laughs> She's very into anime. Ah, she is a loser. <laughs> I'm kidding, I love anime. In fact, the best people love anime, so I think this is a win. I got some thoughts, I got some thoughts. You got some thoughts, I got some thoughts. Here's some quotes from her during this that turned me red. I would never have imagined my daughter would be a dweeb. You're dating the mean girl? <laughs> Dog, what happened? She needs to grow out of this before college. And my personal favorite, I wouldn't have been caught dead with kids that look like that. <laughs> How dare you? Ah, she is a loser. I called her disgusting and told her she should be ashamed of herself. I said her daughter is happy and how would she feel to hear her mom crying about her perceived popularity? I told her how lucky she has it that her daughter doesn't deal with a lot of the issues kids today have. That's true. If her daughter is happy, she's sociable, she has like a friend group, like what's the problem? Oh my God, oh my God. Is this what happens when the mean girls grow up and then they have kids? I don't think her crying means anything. She was saying horrible things. What do you guys think about this one? <laughs> I guess if I if I put myself in this this guy's shoes and I was dating a woman with a child, I'm still a child myself, basically. I think that I would not do what he did. I guess I just have a little thing called emotional maturity. I would be like, hey, listen, 
Your daughter is happy. Your daughter is good, like a good person. I wish my daughters were more like your daughter. Resorting to like calling people names. I, mean, I guess maybe that's like a wake up call for the mom, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's gonna ring through to her. Defend, defend, defend the mom here. Do that, all right, as an exercise. Put yourself in the, the shoes of the mom's lawyer and you have to defend her. In the comment section, tell me why this mom actually is not the a-hole. Just as an exercise, do it. And I wanna read through your comments. Am I the a-hole for walking out of a restaurant on my girlfriend? So my girlfriend and I were having dinner at a restaurant when she got a text from her best friend who recently gave birth. Every story is a birth story, I'm telling you. And she said, oh my God, she got a C-section. She works as a nurse, so then, Explain to me the type of incision they make for that and how it'll leave a scar. I then said as a joke, at least she'll be tight down there. <laughs> no, no, no. My girlfriend looked confused and then said that it was a weird comment to make about her friend. I then said it was a very normal joke to make and she disagreed. I said to her, you're so insecure. And she goes, does it make you feel good to call me that? So then I got really frustrated, got up and walked out of the restaurant and drove home. She called me several times because he drove both of them there, but I was so frustrated and just wanted to get home. So I turned my phone off. Hey, you want to see what emotional immaturity looks like? You're looking at it. Oh, you didn't like my joke and you want to have a conversation about it? How about I walk off and storm off on you, leave you stranded at a restaurant and then also turn my phone off so you can't reach me. And she waited in the cold for 20 minutes for an Uber. Am I the a-hole for walking out on her? and leaving her there for being frustrated. Absolutely, you are. I think if you said, I don't wanna get into an argument in public, let's just save this conversation for later. After that, it's still gonna be a little bit awkward, but you could turn that around if you have enough <laughs> charisma. Been there. <laughs> but I'm all for like, hey, let's just save that conversation till till later. But in the end, you, yeah, no, you just showed uh, too, too much immaturity and you kind of just look like a complete douchebag. And the girlfriend in no way is an a-hole. All right, so I just uh, refreshed the top ones for this week. The top post for this week is, am I the asshole for forcing my son to use a bidet and threatening to talk to his friends or take him to the doctor about his underwear? For some reason, my 14 year old son cannot wipe properly. I don't want to read this story. I just don't. First day I did laundry, I gagged and almost puked from his underwear. I, nope, 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 nope. We'll do one more after this one because this one's nice and short. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she was acting like an idiot? <laughs> so he drives and picks up his daughter every day before and after school. A few days ago, I went to pick her up and she was sitting in front of the school while no one else was there. I asked her why she is alone and she said that the school was closed two hours ago and everyone else went home. I was so angry. I asked her why she didn't call me and her only excuse was that I didn't think you'd come. I told her she was acting like an idiot and that of course I would come. She called me an a-hole and is refusing to talk to me. And that's the whole thing. That's the whole post. Dog. Clearly something's wrong. If your daughter feels like she can't call you, like there's something there. Discover what that is. <laughs> you know, like ask questions. Don't just resort to name calling. You don't name call your children. I would never call my kid an idiot. Well, I would, but again, it would be in a joking way and I, they would know I'm joking. But secretly, I wouldn't be joking because if they're my kid, they're going to be stupid. It's just, sorry. <laughs> this is bad parenting right here, all right? Bad parenting. Am I the a-hole for moving to a hotel because my wife's family insisted I sleep on the couch? My wife and I got married last summer. Her family lives across the country from us. So up until this point, I had never actually visited them, but I had met them a handful of times and we've always gotten along fine. They invited us to come visit and stay with them for a few days and we took them up on the offer. But things went south at the end of the night when it was made clear that they didn't want me sharing a bed with my wife while in their home and that they were expecting me to sleep on the couch. I think if they were just dating, I would understand. I wouldn't agree, but I'd understand at the very least. Cause I know people are like a lot more conservative and they might be a little bit religious where it's like, don't share a bed with uh, someone who you're not married to. But once you're married, bro, what? I honestly thought they were joking at first, but they insisted we sleep separately. I had a problem with the implication that I shouldn't be allowed to sleep next to my wife. And I also have a bad back and the couch did not look the least bit comfortable. They don't have a guest room. I also can't sleep on a couch or I hate it very much. After arguing back and forth a bit, I decided to leave and book a hotel. I told my wife she didn't have to come with me. She chose to stay. I'm trying to understand through his words how he feels about this. Because he just, he kind of brushed over it after arguing back and forth a bit. It's a pretty tame way to put it. Was it a heated argument? Was it a calm argument? Did you come to some sort of agreement at the end? This morning I called my wife asking when I should come by. She told me her parents want me to apologize for leaving the way I did. Did he leave in a furor? Did he leave with an insult? We don't know. Because... He's telling the story. He might have like 
been a complete asshole on the way out, but he brushed over it by being like, oh, we just argued. They are now insisting I need to come back and stay on the couch for the rest of our visit. And if I don't agree with this, I'm not welcome back in the house. My wife's sisters are now bothering me saying this is just the way their parents are, that my wife is very upset and I just need to give in and stay on the couch for the rest of the trip before this turns into some sort of family feud. From my perspective, I don't care what they think and I'm willing to treat the rest of the trip as a solo vacation, go sightseeing and meet my wife back at the airport at the end of the week. This is a nightmare situation. If you're just dating, it's easy to go, oop, let's break up. It's easy enough, right? How would the wife not choose the husband's side? The parents seem to be pretty unreasonable in this situation. Like if my parents were, they would never, but if they were like, hey, no, you can't share a bed. And my girlfriend at the time was like, hey, I'm gonna go get a hotel. I'd be like, I'm coming with you, right? You don't just leave them, let them go off by your, themselves. Oh, I don't know, man. Update. Wow, I didn't expect this post to blow up. Blah, 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 blah. I asked my wife if she knew her dad was going to demand we sleep separately. She said she was surprised by it as well. She'd expected that if I were still just her boyfriend, but we're married now. I asked them if they were, thought it was okay for the parents to act the way they did. They said it wasn't, but they know their father and it's best to let things like this go. Nah, I disagree. I disagree. Because they're all like in their, tw how old? No, she didn't give an age. If you're adults, you need to have that conversation. Like, hey, you're being unreasonable. I know it's your home, so we'll go along with things unless it's like deeply unreasonable. And I feel like this is. This led to a somewhat uncomfortable conversation about how controlling he can get, how he angers easily when he doesn't get his way, and that he was already throwing a fit over me disrespecting him by leaving. Oh, okay, so we got some more immaturity here, yay. <laughs> the reason they were all trying to get me to come back and apologize was because he would find some way to make them all miserable for the rest of the week if I didn't. <laughs> Holy shit, you're doing all that just to placate a miserable old curmudgeon. Time for the grave, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> I told my wife I was really disappointed that she wouldn't side with her husband when I was clearly in the right and she went sort of quiet. She should have went with him, especially if she believed her father was being unreasonable. I know my wife was mainly here to spend time with her sisters, so I told them all I was going to move to a hotel by the beach about an hour away in San Diego for the rest of the week and I'd book a second room for them if they all wanted to join. But if they didn't want to ruffle his feathers before, this is really gonna ruffle things up. They know that their dad is probably going to freak out when they leave, but I think they realized the situation had gone too far. Swallow your spit, Dylan, Jesus. The situation had gone too far, so they decided they would come and deal with the fallout afterwards. I don't think that's the best strategy. Like, let's just piss them off, and then we'll go away for a week, and then come back, and then deal with it then. I fully expect their dad to throw a conniption fit. <laughs> I like rare, I like rare, 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 rare words. Rare words. When he finds out they left without telling him. You're not gonna tell him? Dog, it's like everyone's trying to make the situation worse. But I really don't care at this point. I guess for this guy, it's like, I don't care. He doesn't have to deal with the fallout. But for all the girls, they're gonna have to deal with all of this. And that's gonna be a pain. I tried to be the bigger person at every turn, but he pushed this all way too far. Thanks again for everyone. The fact that he was able to sit down and have a calm conversation with all the girls, except the mom, he was able to convince them all. Right? And it seemed like he had some insight about uh, the fact that it was about control more than it was about house rules. I feel like we're one update short of like a Netflix film. Like a really low stakes family drama Netflix film where they go on vacation and then the father tracks him down <laughs> and it's either a horror film where he murders everyone <laughs> or it's a happy film where it's like Robert De Niro and he's like, oh, I need to learn to live life more freely. <laughs> let me know what your opinion is on any of these. If you feel strongly about any of these, especially if you disagree, let me know in the comment section. Defend that one that I told you to defend if you if you can. Another year, there's just there's, there's just too many assholes in the world for this series to stop. We got to continue to talk about it. So we'll do more of that this year. Uh, there'll be some other types of videos that I want to make uh, on Ooga Booga. Thank you for a million subscribers. That's special. Don't look at the actual subscriber count on YouTube's page. It's like technical difficulties. It's not showing the correct number. Trust me. Trust the evidence. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh.